Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a very basic Godot project. And so let me start out by go ahead and launch Godot. And you can see here, I've already created a session for example. And so let me go ahead and launch that project. So I'm just double clicking on it. Godot is going to load it up. And let's take a look at a couple of things. So first, actually, let me play it for you. So I'm actually going to play this quote unquote game. There's no interactivity here, but what we can see is there's kind of a top section here in red with some title text. And then there's a body white background here again with some other text. And one additional thing I want to show you is that we can go full screen and this game actually scales to take up full screen. So let's talk a little bit about how we might create something like this. So let me close out of this and a couple of things that you're going to notice. We can see here that in the scene dock, there are a number of nodes. Now remember, nodes are the building blocks of Godot. And I have something called a root node and then I can collapse that. And this is actually known as the scene tree. And one child of the root node is something called a color rectangle, which is arguably the most basic visual node you could possibly have in a game. It's literally just a rectangle, possibly with some color. And in this case, it happens to be red. And there's a child of that color rectangle, which is a label. And that is this text here, my new game. And of course, there is a second child of the root node, which is another color rectangle. And it just happens to be color rec two, because you can't have two nodes with the same name. And that rectangle has a, another label as a child. And so essentially what we're doing is we're working with color rectangles and labels to build this basic game. Now, if we look down in the file system doc, we're going to see a couple of things that are quite different. Now, every Godot project has the default environment resources, text resources, and it also comes with a Godot icon. But what's different about this is you're going to see this file right here, which is main.tscn, which is a text scene. And one of the things we need to understand in Godot is that every project in Godot has to have a main scene. In other words, the scene that loads by default whenever someone launches your game. We're going to learn how to define a main scene and then put resources in it. And then finally, we're also going to learn how to work with fonts. Fonts, of course, are a very important part of game design. And so we are going to bring in a true type font, the TTF file. I happen to have one here called Blue T, which is giving us this kind of stylized font that you're seeing here. So this is what we're going to learn in today's tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to close all of this, exit to the project list. And one thing that I know we're going to need is a font. So I'm going to actually load up my browser. And I'm going to go to www.defont.com. And those of you who are designers are probably familiar with this. This is just a website that has tons and tons of various fonts by various designers. And they're all categorized in different ways. There's fancy fonts, there's decorative fonts, typewriter fonts, retro fonts. And all you have to do is click download and you will download the font to your computer. Now they have different licenses for personal use, for commercial use. So for our purposes, we don't really need to pay attention to that, but that's something to be aware of. Now the font that I am going to use is called Blue T. And so I'm actually going to do a search for that. And sure enough, it comes up and here is the creator of Blue T and it happens to be 100% free. So I'm going to go ahead and click download and that'll just take a minute to download. And so that went to my downloads folder. So let me bring that folder up. Oh, excuse me. It downloaded right to my desktop. And so you can see the zip file there. And of course I can see it over here on the right. So I'm going to double click 
that zip file to unzip it. And I can go ahead and delete the zip. I don't need it anymore. And I've got this blue T folder. And I just want to point out there's a couple of files in here, but the one that we want is the one that says .ttf, blue T dot TTF. That's the true type font. We're going to use that in our project in a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started with Godot. So the first thing we need to do is just like before is say, we're going to create a new project. And I'm going to go ahead and just call this session underscore four. And I need to tell Godot where I want to save that. So I'm going to come to my desktop and I'm going to select that folder. And then I want Godot to create that folder for me. So it's the session four project folder. And my project name also happens to be session underscore four. And I'm going to keep the default renderer and I'm going to go ahead and say create and edit. And Godot is going to go ahead and start up my file. Okay, so we're up and running now. And the first thing that I need to do is click on 2D. And you can see here, I want to zoom in a little bit on the viewport. And I'm just going to drag this in. I've changed the color of the highlighting just to make my viewport a little bit easier for you to see. Now, the first thing that we need to do is in any Godot project is specify the root node. In fact, if we're looking over here at the scene doc, it's telling us create root node. And because we are creating a 2D game at the moment, we're going to click 2D scene. And so it's given us our root node here, which happens to be of type node 2D. We don't need to worry about that too much, but just to help us with our naming conventions a little bit, let's go ahead and right click on that. And I'm going to rename this and I'm just going to call it root. That way we're all on the same page about what we mean when we call the root node. And it's literally called root right there. Okay. So that's the first thing that we need to do. Okay, now watch what happens when we actually try to run our project. We have a root node now, but when I come here and I click play, I get this warning. It says, please confirm, no main scene has ever been defined. Do you want to select one? And then it says you can change it later in project settings. Well, this is prompting us and reminding us that every Godot project, in addition to a root node, it has to have a main scene. So what is a main scene? A main scene is the scene that loads automatically whenever a player launches your game. And so we need to go ahead and create our main scene. So we've actually started a scene. It has a root node, but we haven't saved it. And so what we want to do is come to scene, click save as, and we want to save in our resources directory our scene. And by default, Godot is adopting the name root because that's what the root node is called. But just to keep things a little bit distinct, let's go ahead and call this our main scene. And go ahead and leave that TSCN extension and click Save. So now we should be able to go ahead and click Play. And when we click Play, again, it's asking us which scene do you want to use and we can go ahead and select the current one because there is one now. And you can see here, my game has actually launched. Of course, it doesn't show anything. It's just a blank screen, but we actually have a scene that is launchable now. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and let's add some visuals now so that we can actually see things. Now, importantly, I want you to recall that the default dimensions of this viewport, it's 1024 pixels wide and 600 pixels tall. So what we're going to do is actually add a new kind of node. So there's a couple of ways I can do this, but I'm going to select my root node. Whoops, select it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add child node. Now remember, nodes are the building blocks of Godot projects, and there's all kinds of them in here. And a lot of the time, we're going to be focusing on control nodes. And you can see there's pop-ups, there's containers, there's color rectangle, and that's the one we're going to be using. 
And there's also things like labels and panels and texture rectangles, and we'll get into all of these as we move forward. But right now, we want just a colored rectangle, which is one of the most basic nodes possible. So I'm gonna select color rectangle, and I'm gonna say create. Now, a couple of things you'll notice. Right now, color rectangle is a child of the root node. And so I can actually collapse the scene tree to hide color rectangle, or I can open it up so that I can see it. And then of course, if we look on the viewport, we can see here, we've got this white rectangle and I can resize this and move this around all that I want. Don't worry too much about this green flower shaped shape. That's for manipulating this color rectangle. It's not something we need to worry about right now. Notice I can grab any of these handles and resize this rectangle however I want. But what I wanna do is actually position this up at the top and I'm gonna make it the top 100 pixels of my project. And so how do I do that in a, in a non-random way? Well, what I need to do is make sure that the color rect is selected and you know it's selected if you see all these handles. If it looks like this, that means it's not selected. And when I select it, notice that the inspector panel shows me a lot of properties about this item that's selected, the node that's selected. So in other words, I'm inspecting the properties of the selected node. And one of the things I can do is change this node's color. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to change the color property. And if I click on the white area here, I get this pop-up screen that allows me to change the color of the color rect. And you can see here, I have all kinds of control over this. I use RGB and alpha channels, those of you who have done some design work before, or I can simply put in a hexadecimal code. And right now I'm just gonna put in a hexadecimal code for pure red. And I happen to know that that code is FF and 0, 0, 0, 0, and I hit enter and boom, my color rectangle is now has the color of red. Okay, that's great. Now what we wanna do is position it precisely where we want it. So in order to do that, I need to change the color rectangles, rectangle properties. So I'm gonna expand this rectangle menu right here and I can see there are a number of properties of the rectangle. The rectangle has a position, it has a size, and you'll notice if I move this around, the position X and Y value is changing. Same with the width and height. If I change those, those values change. But rather than dragging and dropping and trying to get this exactly where I want it, I'm actually going to type in the numbers that I want. So I actually want the position of this color rectangle to be at the origin of my project. In other words, I want it to have an X value of zero and I want it to have a Y value of zero. And so what does that mean? It simply means that this upper left-hand corner of the rectangle is at the origin of the viewport, which is 0 .00 here. And in terms of size, I want it to take up the entire width of my viewport. So I'm gonna type in 1024. And in terms of height, I don't want it to be very high. I just want it to be 100 pixels. And so I'm gonna type in 100 and click enter. And voila, I have kind of a header now for my project. So I'm gonna go ahead and save what I've done. I'm gonna click scene, save, or I can just hit command S or control S. And then what I'm gonna do is click play. And let's see what happens. Oh, okay, just as you might expect, we actually have something visual now in our game. Now let's see what happens when we go full screen. Now when I click full screen, something happens. You'll notice that for some reason, our project didn't scale properly. It's getting cut off here and it didn't fill up the entire width and height of our screen. So that's actually not an accident. That is something that we need to tell Godot to do. And so we're gonna change the project settings for this particular project. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna come over to project. We're gonna to come to project settings and there's a couple of things that we can do here. But what we, what we wanna do is look at the application settings. And you can see config, run, 
boot splash, and then actually we're going to come down to window. And we're going to tell Godot how we want the game window to behave when we actually play it. So if you come all the way down here to something called stretch, and what we want to do is change the stretch mode from disabled to 2D. We want our game program to stretch in a two-dimensional fashion. And the next thing we need to tell is tell it how to handle the aspect ratio of that window. As it stretches, how do we want it to grow? Do we want to keep the project's aspect ratio or do we want to keep the width? Do we want to keep the height or do we want it to expand both the width and the height? Now to keep things simple for right now, we want to keep the aspect ratio. So we have a 2D mode and we're going to keep the aspect ratio. So I'm going to go ahead and click close. I'm going to save my project, control save, command save, and now I'm going to launch it. And when I click the green button to go full screen, voila, we see that now our project is scaling. It's stretching to fill the entire monitor. And it's also maintaining its aspect ratio. All right, let's exit out of this. That's a great start. So what we want to do now is add some text to this header or this color rectangle. So how do we do that? Well, we actually want it to be a child of the color rectangle. And this is what Godot means by the scene tree. We can add nodes as children to nodes as children of nodes. And the scene tree can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. So right now, let's go ahead and add a new node for some text. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to select color rectangle, right click, add child node. And the type of node that we're looking for, it's another type of control. It's actually a label. We want to label that color rectangle. So I'm going to select label and click create. And you can see here, Godot has inserted a new label into our, a new node into our scene tree. And we know it's of type label. And so we can actually add some text to it. So making sure our label is selected, if I come over to the inspector, there is a field here called text. And I will call this my first game. And so if you look carefully, I know it's a little hard to see here. Let me zoom in and scroll down. It actually says my first game. So I actually want to fill this color rectangle with this label box. And so what I'm going to do is with this selected, I'm going to come up to layout and I'm going to click, click full rectangle because I want it to expand and take up the, the full color rectangle. But you'll notice, of course, that my font is way off to the left and to the top and to the left. And so with it still selected, I can adjust some of its properties. I can adjust its horizontal alignment. And right now it's aligned to the left, but I want it to align to the center. And when I click that, of course, boom, it becomes over to the center. And then for vertical align, I want to align it to the center. Excellent. So let's go ahead and save our scene and let's see if this works. Excellent. I can see my first game is here. Now the problem with this text is that it's very small and it's not very stylish. And so labels by default use bitmap text, which is ju it's just default text and you can't resize it. You can't do anything fancy with it. So what we actually need to do is import a font that we want to use with this label. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. So it's actually really easy. All I'm going to do is snap my Godot project over to the side and I'm going to come to my font data folder. And what I want to do is drag and drop the blue T dot TTF font into my resources folder. And when I do that, you can see Godot automatically imports this blue T TTF file and it, it includes it as a resource for this project. All right, so let's come back up. I want to select my label now. And what I want to do is associate this font file with this label. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to come over to my the inspector panel and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to come to theme overrides. 
And specifically under theme overrides, I want to come to fonts and I'm going to tell Godot that I want to use a new font, a special font here. And right now it says that it's empty. And so what I need to do is this is a new dynamic font. Now, when I do that, the next step is to click dynamic font, which expand, notice it expands this menu down when I click it. I'm going to come to the font property and I'm, it's asking for the font data. In other words, what data are you going to use for this font? And right now it says empty. And so I'm going to tell Godot I'm going to load a new font. And so if I look in my resources folder, look, notice I'm in the resources directory. There are two items in here, but I'm interested in the font. And the font, of course, is the file that has the true type font extension. So I'm going to select that, click open. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice that my first games now has stylized text. And so just to quickly recap, what did we do here? In the inspector panel, with the label selected in the inspector panel, we came down to font. We told Godot we, need, we wanted to use a new dynamic font. We click that to expand the details of the new dynamic font. And we told Godot that the font data we want to use is that true type font named blue T. Now what this allows us to do is change a couple of things. So we can now come into settings and we can expand the size of the font. Now look what's happening. It is growing. So we could set this to whatever size we want. And of course we could always reset it back to its default, which happens to be 16. So let's get something fairly large here, maybe 36. And then of course we might want to change the color of the font. So to do that, I come up to theme overrides and I can click on font color. That reverts it to black, but now I can click and bring the color picker up. And of course I could change it to any color I could possibly imagine. And I'm just gonna keep it white, which I happen to know is the code FFFFFF. So just keep it white for now. All right, excellent. So we've added our first font. And of course, if I play my game, I can see my first game has this nice, beautiful font, blue T, in the header area here. Okay, excellent. So now what we want to do is add a little bit of a body to this viewport. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a second color rectangle to the root node. So I'm going to go to the root node and I'm going to click add child node. And again, the node that I want is a color rectangle. And I can create that and notice it drops it here at the origin. I can move it around to wherever I want. And just like before, I'm going to come over to the inspector panel and I'm going to click on rectangle. Whoops, I'm going to click on rectangle and adjust the position and size properties. And so what I'm going to do is I want this to have an X position of zero because I want it to be all the way over to the left of my viewport. But my Y value is actually going to be 100 because I want it to start at the bottom of this first color rectangle, the red one. And so I'm setting it to have a Y value of 100 for the position. Now in terms of size, I want it to take up the full width, which is 1024. And now, I know my header is taking up 100 pixels, and so the height of this new color rectangle should be 500 pixels. And so I have, let me zoom out a little bit so we can see everything, and pan up, and you can see here it's taking up exactly the entire space. And so with that, now what, I, what do I want to do? I'm going to add a, another child node to that new color rectangle, and you probably guessed it, it's going to be a label. I'm going to go ahead and click create and I'm going to force it to expand to take up the full rectangle and I'm going to align it to the center and I'm going to vertical align it to the center and now what I need to do is specify what font that I want to use. So I'm going to come to theme overrides, I'm going to come to fonts and I'm going to tell Godot I want to use a new font and so I am going to click new dynamic font. I need to expand that menu by clicking on it. I come to the font data 
Right now it's empty and I'm gonna tell Godot I want to load a font. Which one? Blue T. I'm gonna click open and I can adjust the settings here. I just realized I forgot to actually put any text in the text field. So that's why we can't see anything. So let's go ahead and write uh, hello LTech 654 uh, exclamation point. And I don't think we can see that because it is white on white. So let's let's see if that's the case. I'm going to come to theme override colors. If I click here, I can see the font color changes to black and I'm going to keep it black, which is fine, but you can change it to whatever you want. And then in terms of font size, I can get quite a bit bigger here. And I'll just go ahead and type in uh, 36, type in 36. So I've got something. OK, with that, I'm going to save my scene. I could come file, save scene and launch. And I have my the first building blocks here of a Godot project. And of course, if I click full screen, it'll enter full screen and it scales proportionately. All right, fantastic. That's all for this tutorial. Thanks everyone.